And John Fung used to say that you should approach the meditation as a game, something that you play at, but you want to be good at it. It's like an athlete who wants to be good at a particular sport. There has to be a combination of enjoyment and dedication for this to work. So start out by thinking about how fortunate you are that you have the good karma, that you consider focusing on your breath with no other responsibilities right now. All you have to do is be aware of the breath coming in, the breath going out. And you breathe in a way that feels comfortable. Experiment for a bit to see what kind of breathing feels best right now. Long or short, fast or slow, heavy or light, deep or shallow. If you find something that feels good, stick with it and see how long you can stick with it. If you fall off, I'll tell you, so, well, next time I'm going to stay longer. Fall off again, just keep coming back, coming back. The story I told about a Zen master in the middle in the Midwest I had a student who wanted to come out here to California, try his luck at the movie industry in Los Angeles. And the master asked the student, suppose they knock you down, what are you going to do? And the student said, well, I guess I have to accept it. And the master said, no. They knock you down, you get up again. They knock you down again, you get up again. You've got to have that determination, that dedication. Because we're doing this not just to have a pleasant place to stay in the present moment, because we're trying to develop good qualities of the mind. That's the serious part of wanting to win. That the mind is not under control, the mind is not well trained, it can cause you a lot of trouble. So you have to learn how to train it now with something simple like this keeping with one thing, having a sense of being at ease, filling the body with that ease as you stay with that one thing. And then from there you can look at the world with a lot more objectivity. In other words, you can see things more clearly for what they actually are. In particular, you can see your own mind. You begin to see when a thought comes into the mind how it comes. And when you can tell whether it's skillful or not. And when you can let it go if you see that it's not skillful, and when you can encourage it if it is skillful. This is a very important skill. There's so many things they teach in school that are irrelevant to your life. And then things that are more relevant like this don't get taught. So you have to learn how to master the skill on your own. But again, it's like learning how to enjoy a sport, enjoy learning how to master a musical instrument. That's something you voluntarily do. Nobody's forcing you here to meditate, but you realize that it is a good thing to do. So encourage yourself, give yourself a sense of joy in being here, and then a more serious sense of realizing, okay, this is important work that you're doing right now. Because we get, we're born into this life, everything seems positive from the beginning. As we're, when we're children, the body's getting bigger, we're getting stronger, we're getting smarter. Everything seems to be heading in the right direction. But then as you get older, things back up, go in the other direction again. You have to be prepared for that. When aging, illness, and death come, you want to have some skills in the mind so you don't have to suffer from these things. So we're heedful, we're persistent, that's the serious side. But we want to learn how to enjoy this. Because after all, the fruits of the path are not all safe for the end of the path. Learn how to enjoy in being on the path right now. Because it is a good place to be good place to walk, a good place for developing your mind.